The ATF is out to get you. The government doesn't care about you. And your family doesn't love you either, probably. They're sick of all the memes. But you know who does love you? GOA. That's why they've partnered with Tipman Arms on this M422 Elite Rifle. And I had to make sure that it wasn't a pile of hot trash before recommending it to you guys. Five minute review, go. Hey, Range John. Oh, hey, Studio John. Have you ever heard of the Mag Shack? I think I heard about them in a TGC video one time. You should probably know about the Mag Shack. Oh, yeah. Why? Well, the Mag Shack does what the Mag Shack does, and you might need to know about the Mag Shack. Oh, you're being weird because of YouTube nonsense, aren't you? Yep. All right, I will look into the Mag Shack for sure. This thing feels as well constructed as the Bill of Rights, except for the stock. That is a janky basic M4 style stock that seemingly every AR maker throws on their bottom end guns. The gun weighs in at 5.6 pounds, has a 16 inch barrel, and uses 25 round mags. Another positive is that the muzzle device on this thing was put on using some kind of thread locker, maybe rock set, and that tells me that they don't want this thing to rattle apart like an anti-gunner's arguments against freedom. Also, bonus shout out for this incredible magazine loader. There is not one better on the market, I promise you that. The only malfunctions we experienced were when I was doing the accuracy testing and sort of putting pressure on the mag Magazine, leaning onto it. That's what caused the malfunctions in my experience. I'm deducting half a point for that shitty stock, and that means it gets four and a half out of five founding fathers. It's not a heavy gun, and it's not balanced weird like Jerry Nadler's belt line, and it's the exact same shape as America's rifle, the AR-15, and that gets it five out of five bald eagles. In terms of features, this thing has all the bells and whistles you'd expect on such a gun. The stock is adjustable, even though I don't like that particular stock. Decent grip, all aluminum construction, flip up sights that don't suck, functioning forward assist, big boy mags, and an M-lock handguard. For all intents and purposes, you could set this thing up just like your big boy lead delivery system and actually get some reps in on the cheap. Pour one out for the homies paying 60 cents a round for 5.56 right now. And give this rifle five out of five AR-15s. In terms of accuracy, otherwise known as how accurate we can be with the gun, it was really solid. With Federal Auto Match ammo, the groups of 50 yards were okay, but tightened right up when I switched to the CCI standard velocity. Okay, here we go. This is the Auto Mag non-suppressed, Auto Mag suppressed. Definitely seemed to get a little bit more consistent. And then the most consistent, the CCI standard velocity. Not sure what happened there, but Generally speaking, one hole, that's 25 rounds between this and these. That is the ammo I'd be using, but still performed okay with that and that. You know, this is, this is not bad. With a lot more time behind the gun, I bet you could tighten it up even further. It's definitely not a precision gun, but that's not what it's supposed to be. The trigger is decent for what the rifle is, and it's not the lightest pull weight out there, but it does have a clean break and reset, which I always appreciate. I was even able to rip off rounds at a fairly quick pace, so that tells me the trigger weight wasn't bad at all. For accuracy, I'm giving this thing four out of five Eugene stoners. And that brings us to the most important category, the value proposition of this gun. And even though this gun has another layer to it, let's start with the basics. The shooting experience with this thing was fantastic. We ran a variety of ammo from cheap stuff to less cheap stuff. It ate everything. The accuracy was acceptable for this type of gun. It ran great with the AAC Halcyon suppressor, and it got decent ratings in all of the other categories. The extra layer here comes in the form of a sort of collaborative effort. For each one of these, I'm told that Tipman Arms will donate 25 bucks to GOA to help fight the good fight. And to me, that is something that I think a lot more gun companies should and can be doing, putting the money where it counts. F the NRA and other loudmouth 2A orgs that exist to soak up money only. Supporting groups like GOA, SAF, and FRAC is part of how we push back against tyranny. So for value, this thing right here gets five out of five American flags. And that brings the overall rating to a grand total of 23.5 out of 25. Hell yeah, brothers. Hell yeah, brother. 
If you want to see us do more five minute reviews, let me know by getting subscribed to this channel and also leave a comment down below with what you want to see us review next.